I'm Michael Burke and I'm a coachypreneur. We put together a TV show to teach people how to look different and run faster around our book, Zebras and Cheetahs. There's never been a better time to stand out versus fit in. This is Zebras and Cheetahs. Hey Brock. Coach Burt. The Optimizer. How you doing? We're here. Episode four of Zebras and Cheetahs. Yes, sir. This is the Women in Business right. edition. Our first contestant is Christy. My name is Christy White. I'm a salon owner in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Second contestant is Holly. My name is Holly Marie Tong, and I'm a legal assistant, journalist, publicist, and author of the book, Chick Flicks Lie, Sugar-Free Accounts of a Positive Pessimist. Coach Jennifer. My name is Jennifer Preventure. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm a hairstylist and image designer at William Edge Salon in Nashville. Coach, and we've got Lauren. My name is Lauren Hudgens. I live in Gallatin, Tennessee. My job is a high school teacher and basketball coach. Hope is our last contestant. My name is Hope Tenpenny. I'm from Woodbury, Tennessee. I'm a CPA and controller. Well, when you think about this show, it's really about three things. How do we help people find their special? How do we help them package that special and sell that special? Right. Brock, I think these five ladies are ready to find out who's gonna look different, who's gonna run faster, and who's gonna be agile. Who the zebra and the cheetah is. Let's go find out. Let's do it. Ladies, we're here in Nashville, Tennessee. You came to the Zebra and Cheetah Challenge because you want more. It's what attracted you to want more and to step out like a cheetah. Christy? Hi, Coach Burke. I came seeking how to attain self-confidence and how to market my talents to help more people. Holly, 30 seconds. Coach, I came here because I want to step outside my comfort zone. I believe in taking challenges, but I've kind of reached a ceiling. I know my potential, but I need somebody to help me get there. To my next friend, Jennifer. I'm ready to get off the hamster wheel. I'm ready to go back and rediscover what my talents and my gifts are and find new ways to um, help other people and make a difference in the world and gain some courage that I've lost along the way. Hope. I need your help to show me how I can package myself and capitalize on my versatility. All right, Lauren. I'm here, Coach, because I know it's a concrete jungle and I need the right leader to help me take in my unique skill set, package it up, and get it to the world. Ladies, over the next two days, we're gonna really push you. We're gonna do what a good coach will do, to make you have conversations you don't wanna have. Make you do some things you don't wanna do but hopefully we'll help you become something you didn't think you could become. Where am I going? Where the heck? Coach, the toughest process this weekend has been dealing with you and Brock. I, yeah, I'm stressing a little bit. I felt like it wasn't gonna be a difficult challenge for me at all, but it was the later part of it that would be more difficult for me. These guys probably think I'm stalking them because they wouldn't take a picture with me. Do we have a winner? Welcome to Family Staffing Solutions. I'm Becky Bookner, and when we say from our family to yours, we absolutely mean it. We have more real experience with families than any other local or statewide company. We have staffed over 3 million hours of personal care assistance since 1999. We would love to help you stay independent at home and in charge. Whether you are selling your first home or buying your forever home, it is imperative to have an expert on your side. You will need a team behind you to manage your every move during the transaction to stay with you even after the closing. My team has been active in residential real estate sales for the past 20 years and we intend to be here for many, many more. As experienced negotiators and industry leaders, we promise to provide you with constant communication and a team that will provide you excellent customer service. Since your home is your largest asset, let our team of experts handle your transaction from start to finish and beyond.
There are over 534,000 new businesses started every month in the United States. Do you know what this screams? Commoditization, sameness. And I guarantee, no matter what you do for a living, there are thousands and thousands, if not millions, of people that do exactly what you do. A zebra looks different than every other animal in the animal kingdom. A cheetah runs faster than every other animal in the animal kingdom. So in a world of sameness, in a world of commoditization, we have got to learn how to stand out versus fit in and how to run faster to opportunity than other people. So when you think about a zebra, I want you to think unique. There's nothing that looks like the zebra. It's unique. And in our world, in the business world, it's proprietary, i.e. you can't copy it. So we have to help you in the course of these two days find your special. And I'm referring to your special as your uniqueness. Because many people have never figured out their birthday gifts. And you know what the best part about birthday gifts? They were given to you at birth. Here's the best part. They were factory installed. The first challenge is called the Zebra Challenge. It's for us to help you go through a series of things to find your special and package it up. And there's nobody better in the world than my expert who I brought in to help coach you up and give you advice in Lori St. Smith. She owns her own business called Daffodilly Design where she takes complicated stuff and makes it simple and takes surroundings and makes them beautiful. Lori, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys today. One of the most important things we can do is to increase our confidence. And when we do the things that in the world to walk around and make sure that we're listening to things we need to hear, seeing things we need to see, feeling emotions and taking in all of our environment, I think it's extremely important to then be able to express yourselves. All of the experience that we have in life can help us to develop that confidence and express exactly who you are. Whether it's in your surroundings, which is representing ways to make yourself comfortable, make your people comfortable that are with you, or to go out and, and express yourself in your fashion and the way that you build your relationships. Lori will be one of our judges on this challenge. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Chief Optimizer Brock Patterson to explain the Zebra Challenge. You'll have one hour to take pictures that represents what makes you unique. In that one hour, you have to make it back to the boardroom at the Nashville City Club, where you'll have 30 minutes to prepare a presentation to present to the board about what makes you unique. Find unique pictures. Now, if you're late by one minute or one second, you'll have a 10 minute penalty where you can't start working on your project. Are you ready? Take off. I am not scared about this, but I'm very excited. Um, I'm excited to go find pictures that represent what my talents and my skill set are, and I think it'll be good. That would have been my shot too. I didn't have my camera on. I want to go to the um, Hope Pregnancy Center. Um, that's where my journey started. My plan for the challenge was to start finding pictures of interest to me. I wouldn't say that I was scared. I was actually really excited. I love to take pictures, and I was thinking about all of the things in Nashville that I could find to represent me. Unfortunately, whenever I got out on the streets, I quickly realized that things that represent me were not very close to me. I'm thinking about taking a new approach and trying to take as many pictures with as many people as I possibly can, because I'm gonna say that one of my Specials, my unique abilities is connecting with people of all sorts of different um, calibers. Hey, would you like to take a picture with me? Sure. All right. Selfie. Thanks. Okay. Have a great day. I moved from a small town to a big city, so building standing tall has been part of me. My plan was to run as fast as I can and get as many pictures as I can. I kind of knew where I was going, so I booked it to Broadway, and I went and started snapping pictures of everything I had memories with. I bought my first pair of boots. So I started off in a dead sprint. Where am I going? Where the heck? The place I needed to go was approximately 1.3 miles. I started running and my shoes were not appropriate. Brock was not joking about the tennis shoes. And so I decided to find a friendly um, person on the street. And we only have one hour and I don't have any cash on me. Can I get some cab money please? Cause I've got to get somewhere. I've got to get up 1.5 miles and back. Like five, I'm sure like five, ten bucks will be plenty. 
you, you were awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's get a cap. I was once a tourist here too, and I'm using you to represent my journey, so I thank y'all so much. I kind of feel like I'm struggling a little bit with really digging deep with this stuff. I asked some of my friends and family, you know, why they would hire me or what they thought were my strengths, the things that make me unique, and I feel like I've gotten a lot of fluff answers really, you know, great customer service, personable. Um, so to translate that into deeper things is, is more challenging than I thought, and then to try to put that into a picture, I live in a small town and I always like to see when people walk and ride bicycles and we don't see that in our town. I'm on a challenge right now as you can see, you got some guy. You gotta, you gotta let me out whenever there's ten. Whenever I'm at ten bucks, I gotta get out because <laughs> I had to. I had to. I had to bump money off the street to get in the cab. Just taking a picture. Thank you. Smile. Would you sing a song? You want me to sing Dave Matthews. I can't do that. Why not? I don't know any. <laughs> Thanks, and maybe you should consider learning some Dave Matthews. It's kind of good music. <laughs> have a good night. Gathering my pictures, I didn't really have a plan. Um, I just walked around the city and kind of looked for different things uh, around the city that I thought would convey what my talents and my skill sets are and just try to take pictures of things that would do a good job of communicating that. I think one of the things that makes us really good at what we do is that we're good with people and we make people feel good. Oh, I agree. So I'm happy faces translate years. well. Good for you, sister. Yeah, I've only been behind the chair seven. Well, the pictures I collected the most of were pictures from my past, things that bring me happiness. I collected a lot of pictures that brought back uh, childhood memories living at home. I love Harley. I'm actually taking it more of the roots because I believe that you got to remember your roots. That's all part of the journey. There's been a whole lot of uh, do not enters in my life and a whole lot of don't cross the streets, but I've overcome them. Would you like to take a picture with me? We're filming for a show, Zebras and Cheetahs. Sure. Thanks. What? These guys probably think I'm stalking them because they wouldn't take a picture with me. A butterfly is a great representation. I teach biology um, of how something ugly can transform into something beautiful. Um, and I've been through the ugly, so now let's take it and make it beautiful. Take a picture of the number one sign because I want to be number one. No crap around here. I, yeah, I'm stressing a little bit. Way out of my element, my comfort zone. I haven't done any sort of presenting or talking to a group of people or really spent any time thinking about the things that make me unique or different in a long time. I felt like it wasn't gonna be a difficult challenge for me at all, but it was the later part of it that would be more difficult for me. It's a collage here that has a do not enter sign, a hand telling me to stop, a suitcase, and a bench. I set out for one thing, but discovered myself in something else. I spent a lot of time ignoring the caution signs, um, sitting on the bench waiting. I've rerouted a lot of times. I've made some mistakes along the way. The balcony um, and the fancy gowns, if that had really been what this journey was all about for me, then I wouldn't have the character that I have. I'm done with the lost years and I'm looking ahead. I found myself pregnant in my last year of college. Um, I ended up graduating and getting a job. Within my first year, I found out I was pregnant with my son. So now I'm back here. I have bills to pay. Um, I'm a single mother. I'd been on welfare, welfare before. I found myself back in church. And I had these principles in me when I was younger that had let go of. And I found this quote on the way in and it says, reality is wrong and dreams are for real. For real. I want women to know that you can transform yourself. 
You can be in a dirty situation. A caterpillar is dirty. If you stick through it, you can transform yourself into a butterfly. So I spent many years in um, depression. And about 16 years ago, I met a nutritionist that changed my life. He helped encourage me and I gravitated towards that because I thought, this heals people. And so later years, I, I became a hairstylist. And because I still had the passion of nutrition, when people sit in my chair, I not only get to make them beautiful, I can help them get healthy, just feel that there's life again. And when people start getting their life back, people's eyes are opened and dreams come back into them. And I struggled to find it and I found it on my own. And now I'm at a place that I feel like that I can really help people get further. I knew that I did not want to spend my whole life working hard. And I found this guy and he looked like he had had a pretty hard life and worked pretty hard himself. So that kind of really um, connected with me. I ended up working three jobs while I'm in college. Got through with school, focused on one job. I was an auditor. I was the person that went to my clients with all this complicated accounting facts and put it into really simple terms that they could understand. So I got out of auditing and I went into private industry where I met my mentor, Chad Boyd. He was really helpful to pull out some of those special, unique abilities that I have. One of those is I'm more than a bean counter. You can put me in front of anyone and I can take any type of complicated financial information and turn it into something simple and understandable. After school, worked some retail jobs and um, met a couple girls in one of the jobs that I was working at who presented me with a doorway and I found myself very open to some new opportunity and these girls all worked at the same salon and so I went to that salon owner and decided to be a risk taker and kind of put myself out there in the middle of it all and I essentially said I'm not leaving until you give me a job and so he realized that I was serious and he hired me. And through connections, met a gentleman by the name of William Edge and he inspired me to go to school for hair, which makes me very versatile. I see things from both a business side um, as well as the client behind the chair perspective. Ladies, this was the first challenge, the zebra challenge. What we were looking for is the way you tell a story that compels us to want to have a relationship with you, or in some instances, how are you? We're gonna go through the feedback. Lauren, we'll start with you. Lauren, one of the things that really touched me right off the bat was that you used a zebra background in your PowerPoint. I thought that was a really nice detail that really uh, caught my attention. I also thought it was pretty amazing that you were able to tell us that you started off running, your shoes didn't work out, and you wanted to get to a certain destination. You found someone to give you $10 and got you a cab to get there. That's over the top, so good job on that. Christy. You started with your childhood examples and you talked about how you got to where you are. You talked about your profession. The only thing I was really saddened about was you didn't show photos. I think that when you held your laptop close, you were unable to, to share with the audience. Hope. Hope, I thought it was really cool that, how, uh, that you were different from other accountants, per se, that you are receptive and friendly and very approachable. So I think you talked about your, um, the things that make you different right, right off. Holly Tong. You knew right where you were going. You said that in life, and then you showed us by heading straight to Broadway. I'm not sure if you were running at the time, but I had that visual of you running straight to Broadway. I thought that was a really cool way of getting us started and engaged with your uh, particular presentation. All right, finish us off with Jennifer. Jennifer, you had very specific images that meant very specific things, and you presented those really well. So I really appreciated those very symbolic photos. Each one of you did a great job. You really dug in deep. Our messaging is not quite there. You're not ready for the boardroom yet. So Lori, based on the feedback, who would be awarded the winner of this challenge? Brock began us on this project today talking about the challenge being based upon your presentation style, your creativity, and your uniqueness. So based on those things, we have chosen a winner, and it was difficult to do, but it is Lauren. Congratulations, Congratulations. Lauren. Nobody came, are you just gonna do this by yourself? I wonder what happened, I'm thinking, oh, what would I would just die? I figured that was the most horrifying challenge that they could pick. When I first walked into the boardroom, I felt like I was in hell. Someone once said that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I love what I do every day.
Daffodilly Design offers comprehensive interior design for residential and commercial applications, garden design, as well as holiday and event styling. New construction or remodeling, colors to styles to space flow to furniture and fixtures, fabric and accessories. A collaborative team approach works to execute projects from beginning to end. Lori Sane Smith's approach to design is to create focuses on creating spaces that are memorable and functional. The end result and use of the space is always where her process begins. DaffodillyDesign.com Whether you are selling your first home or buying your forever home, it is imperative to have an expert on your side. You will need a team behind you to manage your every move during the transaction to stay with you even after the closing. My team has been active in residential real estate sales for the past 20 years and we intend to be here for many, many more. As experienced negotiators and industry leaders, we promise to provide you with constant communication and a team that will provide you excellent customer service. Since your home is your largest asset, let our team of experts Handle your transaction from start to finish and beyond. Here we go. We move to the cheetah. And when I think about a cheetah uh, in business, there's three really big things I think about. Are you the first in the market, i.e. you're the first one to penetrate a market? You're the first one to bring a new idea. You're the first one to go out and lead other people. The second thing I think about is you're unique in the market. And you actually could be in the market for a number of years and bring something entirely unique to the market. Or the third one is you're just the best in the market. Many times when you're the first, you're the best, right? Because there's no competitors. When I think about a cheetah, when other people fatigue, when other people get tired, cheetahs dig in. When they vacate, we dig in. You see the difference? We fight through fatigue when we get tired because we're cheetahs. We're gonna move from the zebra to the cheetah, right? And a cheetah is about running faster than everybody else. Cheetahs are agile. And our chief optimizer, Brock Patterson, is gonna give you a little bit of insight into what you need to be ready to do. Your goal is to create a flash mob. The flash mob challenge totally freaked me out. I was totally panicked, totally scared, totally nervous, and totally wishing that we could pick a different challenge. I figured that was the most horrifying challenge that they could pick. Get as many people as you can. My first reaction was, oh no, I'm not gonna have anybody to participate with me. Creativity song choice, resources, networking, that's your challenge. My first thought was, oh great, I can't dance. That's like my worst skill in the world. We will be doing it right in the middle of the farmer's market. So there will be all kinds of people on the square of Murfreesboro that are coming to do their Saturday morning shopping. My third, first thought was, oh great. I don't know what a flash mob is, really. I know it's singing and dancing. I didn't know if it was like High School Musical or what the deal was. And if you don't know what a flash mob is, then you need to do your homework between tonight and tomorrow. We'll find out how resourceful you are because a cheetah is very, very resourceful. The way that I prepared for it was by tapping into my networks immediately. I got on my phone right away. I uh, made a Facebook status. I started texting people. Do you have some other people that you could reach out to and ask them to get in touch with me if they're available? I would appreciate it. Yes, that would be awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. So we're kind of giving you a little planning opportunity here. Okay. And, and what, we're gonna, what we're gonna find out is about your networks. Mob, you want it to still kind of be discreet and them not expecting something happening and then bam, it happens, you know. My direction is the basketball team and they're all at the first home football game. Probably have to have a sleepover so they'll all get up and go. That's what I'm going to offer. A sleepover. My house is a wreck. And we can practice. I'm going to reach out to my son's network because kids will show up and do just about anything to be on TV. So I'm going to go through 
his iPad, and I'm going to message all his friends and see who's available to show up tomorrow. Think about it for But uh, we're having our first home football game right now, so none of them are picking up their phones. But they're all there, so if I can get there before the game gets over, and we're down to seven o'clock, I got so them all in one absolutely. spot. Absolutely, you got them all. I brought in one of my first class experts in Becky Bookner, the president and CEO of Family Staffing. She started her business in 1983. She was a cheetah in 1983. She's still a cheetah today. Becky, give these ladies some advice on how they can go out and win this challenge. Well, first of all, just trying to create a flash mob is a huge need. And I think what you went through when you were tr thinking about who you could get, what you were going to do, and how you are going to solve that, have such application of what you want to do in your life and your career. And, what, and if you can find the need, and it matches who you are and the value that you have in your life, then you've just got an awesome opportunity for success. She works in the personal care business, the older generation. She is truly one of the front runners in this business. She said something very valuable. See a need, fill a need. Money only changes hands when problems are solved. Never forget that. The cheetah goes out into the world and looks for problems that their skill set can solve and they are compensated based on how well they solve those problems. At the end of this challenge, there'll only be one winner. Young man, there's no need to feel down. I say, young man, pick yourself off the ground. I say, young man, cause you're in a new town. There's no need to be unhappy. Young man, there's a place you can go. I said, young man, when you're short on your dough, you can stay there. Performing was crazy. Um, it was actually a lot of fun. It was probably the most fun that I had out of everything, um, which I like considering it was the scariest challenge for me. But it was chaotic, it was hot, um, but we had a lot of fun. We had a great fun. I had a lot of people that showed up to help me and we all had a blast. For you men to enjoy, you can hang out. I don't know, it's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. Hey, get yourself, you're so clean. You can have a good meal. You can do whatever you feel. All right, that's good, we did it. <laughs> when I was performing, it was awkward kind of, but it was also funny. And I had a blast because some of the people that mean the most to me just happened to be there. All right, we're gonna do the basic Step. steps. Slide to, to the, the left, slide to the right. Take it back now, y'all. Bringing Callie along was really exciting, the little girl. Say hey, Callie. Hi. Uh, she's just a doll. She's so much fun, and she just ate that up. <laughs> Turn it out. So I made the most of it. I had so much fun and I was so thankful that my friend Katie was the one uh, kind of doing the rhythm um, and singing it because she's a singer and she just, she's got great rhythm. Clap your hands. It, it ended up being a great experience. It was a lot of fun. I wasn't worried about being perfect. Okay, that's what we have. Yeah. The cha -cha. I reached out to a few people who specialize in choreography and they were very helpful in pulling together my mom. Hey, yeah. Don't forget to say yeah, 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 yeah. Clap, say hey. I don't really think I helped my group all that much. I spent most of my time pulling in people. Come on now, say I didn't practice my dance or my song, but I had a lot of people there, so that's what I was going for. Jump up now, shout! Jump up now, shout! Jump up now, shout! Zija, 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 Zija. Young man, there's a dream. When I was performing, I hated every minute of it. <laughs> I said, stay there. What they're doing though, it is creative. It's just taking that song and changing it to fit the 
Zija business, which is a health nutrition uh, health, health company. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That part's creative. You just don't have the other part. My team really had fun with it. C-I-G-A. C-I-G-A. I had a sleepover with about 15 girls, high school girls, to prepare for the challenge. Hands up to play my song, you know it's gonna be okay. Dangerous, um, on the edge, when we were performing in the middle of the street, um, almost getting run over by cars, and the safety of my players were just, it was just, that was just what was running through my mind was, nobody please get run over. I got a ticket for the long way around. What a tough challenge that really challenged your creativity, it challenged your networks, it challenged your ability to adapt, to sell, to overcome. So Becky, let's start with Jennifer and give feedback. Fast on your feet. I, I mean, first of all, just amazing to watch you under pressure. Just keep smiling, just act like you had the world under control and, it, and you just took advantage of some opportunities. Move kind of fast right there at the end. It's amazing, and to stay calm and um, and present yourself so well was just just awesome. Holly, there are always unexpected consequences, and that little girl was just precious. And you know, sometimes things present themselves, and for you to have that opportunity to add that joy, the cameras were on her. It just made the whole thing just really special and wonderful, and I, and and showed how sometimes life just gives you an opportunity to take advantage of it. Becky. Thoughts on Hope? Wow. It was definitely a wow. You could tell you've done a lot of work with your networks and they really showed up for you and sometimes to know you've got that kind of support and that you can generate that much interest in a vision that you're asking for and need you've identified says a lot about your ability to sell. Just really, really terrific. And they did look like they were right with you all the way. All right, Christy. You all were right in the sun. Probably of all the groups, that was the most complicated thing. So the point is that this is not easy. Sometimes you have to go through some really hard things to deal with, but you finished it and everybody looked great. They looked like they were having a good time even though the you know, water was just flying. So um, I, I just thought your, um, your adaptability there and ability to stay calm was, was really remarkable. Lauren. When you were standing on the park bench, I thought, she, she, nobody came. Are you just going to do this by yourself? wonder what happened. I'm thinking, oh, what would I would just die? And then all of a sudden you took off. And I, I mean, the thing I would say is you were right on the edge in the traffic where the hot spots were, knew exactly what you were doing. Then your other members of your team came together and you could see that they were as comfortable as you were out there in, in a danger zone. This was tough for us. Each one of you brought something unique to the table. There were two people in the challenge that clearly stood out to us. They were almost chibras. And the two people that stood out were Hope and Lauren. This is where just a little bit of separation and, and just an advantage is. I call it the tiebreaker. We deliberated for almost 20 to 30 minutes with all of our staff because the decision was so tough. Becky? Challenge person herself taking it out into the road and it's Lauren. Lauren, you are the winner. Now, I want to tell you this, Hope, the only clear difference, if you look at what a true flash mob is, is where different people join at different times. It's not just one group all doing one thing. It's a person come from here to there, they join, they get attention. It's unexpected, it's spontaneous, but we cannot and we will not discount the networks that you brought to the table. You should be very proud of that, okay? Now, here's the fun part. Lauren has won the first two challenges, but when we go to the boardroom, all of that 
is off the table. Any person can win. Here we go. What is a commodity? A commodity is where the consumer thinks, I can get you anywhere. And if I can get you anywhere, why in the world would I pay premium dollar for you? It's called the commoditization trap. See, to charge premium dollar, you gotta bring something really, really unique. Most college students right now, 65%, when they get out of college, are moving back home with their mom and dad. They're not prepared because they can't do four real basic things. They can't fix anything, they can't sell anything, they can't solve any problems, and they can't add any unique value, which is one of four things every zebra and cheetah can do. How are you feeling? I'm feeling super excited and very confident. What's the biggest and toughest part of going through the zebras and cheetahs process and the challenges? The toughest process this weekend has been dealing with you and Brock. I worked really hard early on and then I've become comfortable, but you and Brock have really stretched those limits this weekend. Good, we've done what good coaches do, which is have those hard conversations with you. I really believe you're a star in the making. I think you are sitting on acres of diamonds. Now I'm looking for that refinement. When I made the statement last night, if I'm confused about what you do, it's probably because you're confused about <laughs> it. It's like you have all of these skill sets, the personality, the charisma, the confidence, and that's why so many people are drawn to you. How do you go and articulate what it is that you've got that is this hard skill set? Because all of those things are soft skills. Mm -hmm. I think the process has really forced you to step back and look, and if anything, it's got you out of that comfortable state. Fair enough? Fair enough. How are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. I went home last night and I felt like I thought about things more and I'm going in there confident and ready. What is it exactly that Holly does? Is she a marketing mind? Is she a journalist? You've got this myriad of experiences that are all valuable, mm -hmm. but what is it you're gonna use these for when you get in front of those people because they don't know you? The market doesn't have a chance to see all of that stuff. So you're somewhere between uh, a real aggressive, somewhat aggressive, and so what I want to see you be is just be aggressive, be, be you, but go in there and really condense this and, ho and hone it out and let them know this is what I do. Because I look at it as what would I hire Holly for? Yes. What is her hard skill set versus her soft skill set? Does this boardroom scare you any? A little bit, not actually a lot. <laughs> okay, okay. Has this experience forced you out of any of your comfort zones? Yes, probably all of them. And that's been a good thing for you. Yes, very good. You have this uh, quiet confidence about you. I'm looking for that, that cheetah to come out of the cage <laughs> some, right? I'm looking for you to be convicted about what you believe in. I'm looking for you to, to really sell yourself. Because in a noisy world, um, first we gotta get people's attention. And so what I'm looking for is to unleash the cheetah, the passion and the fire, to walk in there confident and knowing you have something incredibly valuable. Your story is very compelling. So when you get in that boardroom, you walk in there and you, you're an expert, okay? okay. You're, you're talking to other experts. Fair enough? Yes. How are you feeling? I'm confident, excited, mm -hmm. a little bit of nerves. I mean, you have come in and really dominated this competition. What I wanna see from you is that confidence expressed, mm -hmm. vocal, mm -hmm project, don't, don't be the shy, quiet Lauren. Be the person that believes. Just, just picture yourself going into the locker room before a championship game. Mm -hmm. And you have got to sell your players on what it's gonna take. And that's gonna evoke some emotion, some passion in you. And so I want you to focus on confidence in your articulation. Okay. When you go in there, sell them on, on you're here, and you're here to win, okay? Because they don't know you. Right. How are you feeling about this moment? I'm excited. Nerves are good in this case, but I've been practicing and preparing and I'm gonna go in there and make it count. You're a cool person. Thank you. But you're not just a cool person, you've got a lot of depth. How can we take your coolness and your depth and your interesting personality and your mindset of just never give up and put it into a hard skill set so you could take it out into the world and make money with it? Sounds good to me. I want you to see yourself as an entrepreneur that's got a very special skill set. And go back into that space with new ideas, fresh ways to be monetized, so you can truly monetize all of these characteristics that you have. I'm excited to do that. All right, ladies, it's almost time to go into the boardroom. This is a part of this experience but what it's forced you to do 
is look deep within you to find your special, package your special, sell your special. This is the moment where you walk in and sell your special to three experts who've been extremely successful. Go in and connect, make your points strong, have lots of conviction and passion, and sell them on what you have to offer. Sell them on your special. The boardroom was actually the thing that I was dreading from day one. We have three experts that represent what a true zebra and cheetah is. The boardroom was like a haunted house. Sometimes I gotta look somebody in the eye and tell them that I cannot make them look like Carrie Underwood. I'm not only a pretty fun face. I'm a company's total package. Do we have a winner? Welcome to Family Staffing Solutions. I'm Becky Bookner, and when we say from our family to yours, we absolutely mean it. We have more real experience with families than any other local or statewide company. We have staffed over 3 million hours of personal care assistance since 1999. We would love to help you stay independent at home and in charge. Daffodilly Design offers comprehensive interior design for residential and commercial applications, garden design, as well as holiday and event styling. New construction or remodeling, colors to styles to space flow to furniture and fixtures, fabric and accessories. A collaborative team approach works to execute projects from beginning to end. Lori Sane Smith's approach to design is to create focuses on creating spaces that are memorable and functional. The end result and use of the space is always where her process begins. DaffodillyDesign.com Let's go. When I first walked into the boardroom, I felt like I was in hell. The boardroom was incredibly intimidating. It appeared to be three judges sitting up above me. Hi, my name is Hope Timpenny and I'm the human battery. I am a capsule of energy. I have the unique ability to maintain an insatiable amount of energy, to transfer confidence to anyone I meet, and to make everyone feel special. I am a CPA, and you're probably looking at me thinking you've never seen a CPA who looks anything like this. That is one thing that truly sets me apart in my industry. I am the extroverted accountant. I'm the auditor that you actually want to see. And I'm a CPA with a personality. I'm not only a pretty fun face. I'm a company's total package. I run faster than anyone else in my industry. One of my top skills is taking the financial aspect of a company and transferring that into business decisions. I'm so good at doing that that I've been made a controller of a regional pharmacy company um, at the young age of 26. I'm the CPA that can connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime. I'm a leader and a mentor that can use my positive energy to transform lives personally and professionally, and I'm the blue-collared board member that <clears throat> can protect your company both culturally and financially. Again, I am the total package that anyone would be more than happy to have. So today, whenever you make up your decision, I hope that you will remember me, the human battery, and all of the positive energy that I'm leaving you with. Thank you. Holly, the board is ready for you. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready for them. Let's go. Okay. The boardroom was kind of surprising to me at first because I did not expect to walk into such a dark room. And my first thought was actually, oh good, maybe this is gonna be good because I might do better not really seeing their faces too much. Hey guys, my name is Holly Marie Tong and I stand before you today as a recovered shy girl and a witty warrior woman. See, when I was growing up, I had big city dreams. 
And I would sit there in class and I would think about those dreams and I would think about where I was going. And uh, that's why I brought along this bag today in case you're wondering. Nothing represents who I am or the journey that I've been on better than this. See, I bought this 10 years ago when I was getting ready to go to Nashville. I carried a lot of baggage in this bag, goals, a lot of writing, a lot of dreams. Now, today, it's holding my first published book, Chick Flicks Lie, Sugar-Free Accounts of a Positive Pessimist. And I would actually like to give everybody, oh, sorry about that. I did not see that, a uh, free copy of my ebook that you can get on there. And uh, just like that moment right there, I've had to uh, laugh off adversity in life because I've had a lot of it at different times. But see, I've had a lot of unique experiences. And in this book, it's the trials and tribulations of not just dating, but my life in general. Not only did I write this book, but I am a legal assistant, a journalist, and a publicist. I started out doing door-to-door -door sales in the extreme cold winter, factory, retail, social work. So I believe that I'm adaptable. I can relate to different people in different situations. I am a zebra because I've always stood out. I've always been against the grain. I have never done things just because everybody else is doing them. And I'm a cheetah because I've always jumped on opportunity and I've went out there in the world and I've got it done even when it hurts, even when it isn't fun. I'm worth investing in. I believe that I have something out there that is worth doing business with. Christy, the board is ready for you. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. The boardroom was actually the thing that I was dreading from day one once I heard that we were going to do that. But once I walked in, I actually felt at ease. Good afternoon, my name is Christy White and I'm very honored to be here today to share with you. As I uh, went through my childhood at home, my parents always encouraged us children that we could always be anything that we wanted to be. At the age of 18, I moved to the state of Tennessee, and all that stability and security was stripped from me. I kind of shrunk down into a world of depression and sickness. I decided that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, so I sought a way to find myself out of that. I found myself during the going down the journey into the world of cosmetology, where I'm now a hairstylist and master colorist. I opened a salon back in 2010. At that time in my life, I met another huge mentor by the name of Paul DeGrigley. He saw me to be very strong and confident, and he saw me with a head full of dreams that I had forgotten that I had. He taught me to find those dreams again and have the belief in myself to go further, and that I did. Through the years, I've developed um, a name in my community because I am a stylist of many passions. I decided to re collaborate my business and my title, and I have discovered that I am a life-changing stylist. I now can have a client sit in my chair. I can counsel on nutrition. I can take them outside into my gym, where I also teach CrossFit, and I can help people get back um, mobility in their life. Within that, I can also take any stylist and I can teach them to do the same, this same unique transformation that no other stylist can do. The board is ready for you, Lauren. Are you ready? Let's go get them. The boardroom was like a haunted house. All I saw was three lights and three shadows. My name is Lauren Hudgens. I'd like to introduce myself to you as Optimus Prime. For those of you that may not know who Optimus Prime is, he's a fictional character off the movie Transformers. And now I'm in the transformation business. I've undergone several transformations. Imagine yourself, 24 years old, a single mother, not of one, but of two. I have a choice to make in my life. Do I go back to welfare or do I choose to be a winner? I had to realize that I was not alone and that I was being taken through the fire to be forged into pure gold. Now I refer to myself as Optimus Prime. You all would just see me as a teacher, a basketball coach, and a network marketing professional. But I'm able to transform lives through the education of my students, through the teachable moments of my players, and through the health and wealth 
of my Zebra clients. You see, I'm a true zebra and cheetah. My unique past aligned with the ability to adapt, lead, and organize set me apart from the rest. I displayed the skill set over the past two challenges. The first challenge, we had one hour in Nashville to take as many pictures as we could that portrayed us in a unique fashion. I had a plan. I had no way of reaching that plan. So I had to be resourceful. I literally had to find someone off the street that would be willing to give me money so I could get a cab to get to my destination and back in the allotted time. I was able to win that challenge. This morning we were presented with the challenge to create a flash mob. I had to downplay my weaknesses and upplay my strengths. I was able to create, lead, and organize a flash mob that literally stopped traffic. We've all been to that crossroad in our life. Mine just happened to be welfare to winter. Jennifer says believe on your necklace. Yes, it's sir. time. If you'd have some conviction, the board is ready for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. The boardroom was really intimidating. When I walked in, everything was dark, which scared me to death. I was really hoping to see the faces of the judges and be able to connect. And so that took away a comfort zone that I had. So it was a little intimidating, a little scary. My name is Jennifer Preventure. I work at William Edge Salon and We Spa in Nashville, Tennessee. And I like to think of myself as being in the transformation business, that I'm a transformation specialist. There are 86,000 salon-related businesses in the United States. That's my concrete jungle. That's what I'm up against every day. One of the things that's required of me is to be a world-class listener. It's very important that I am able to sit down, look my clients in the eye, listen to what they're telling me when we start a consultation about their hair. It's also very important for me to listen outside um, the salon when I'm out from behind the chair, out in the community. Ladies talk about their hair all the time. It's so dry, it doesn't look good, I wanna change this. Opportunities to connect with people, shake their hand, introduce myself to them, give them a business card and ask them to come into my business. I also have to be a visionary. When people sit down and they start telling me about their hair, I've gotta start thinking about you know, what it is they see in their head. Coaching is a huge part of hairstyling. Nobody really thinks about it that way, but sometimes that means having hard conversations. Sometimes I gotta look somebody in the eye and tell them that I cannot make them look like Carrie Underwood. Sometimes it means talking to people about their self-esteem. It means telling them, you know what? You hide behind your hair. Let's cut this off. Let's open you up. Let's expose you more to the world. Show people who you are. And I'm a problem solver and a fixer. People come in and they got some crazy messed up hair. They've bleached, over bleached, colored, box colored, cut themselves. I got a limited amount of time. I got to be a cheetah in this area. Look at how I can use my time and how I can fix that problem, address their needs, solve their problem and send them out the door looking better and feeling better than they were when they came in. And last but not least, I love my job. Every day I get up and I love my job. Someone once said that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I love what I do every day. So in closing, I would like to give each of you whew, a business card and not only ask for you to vote for me as the next zebra and cheetah, but I would like to ask you to come to my salon and sit in my chair and give me the opportunity to serve you and make your day. We have three experts that represent what a true zebra and cheetah is. We have Lottie McCormick with Legacy Home Loans, one of the top 10 mortgage originators in the country, who is in Kendra Cook's word, gets in the dirt with the home buyer. Kendra Cook, one of the great real estate agents in the world, a machine with Bob Parks Real Estate Agents. She's not only a real estate agent, she's an entrepreneur. She's a true businesswoman who has a team. She also has figured out a way to be one of the top producers and build balance into her life. Thank you. And Becky Buchner, one of our featured experts, started family staffing in 1983, the personal care industry. She's vivacious, she's got a personality that's out there, I love it. I would like to ask each contestant to step up and tell them the good, the bad and the ugly. Hope I loved your energy. I love the way you look. I love what you've accomplished at such a young age. You are a complete package. I thought you seemed a little nervous and I would have loved it if you had not referred to notes. I don't think there's any doubt that you could work around any boardroom and beat everybody's socks off working hard. Your energy was fantastic. I would like to see you hone in on one of those passions and just 
drive it home. Just go to the next level with that. And I love the way you're very comfortable with the way you look. Use that to your advantage. Very smart. Holly, when you walked out and tripped and didn't miss a heartbeat, I thought, you are my girl. I loved that about you. I, when you walked out and I saw your bag, I thought, <laughs> I need to talk to her about professional dress for success. And you said, this is my story. I fell in love with your bag. I loved everything about you. I think you're very relatable. I think anybody could relate to who you are and what your message was. And I thought you delivered that to us very well. I think it's wonderful that you uh, can paint a picture of small town life and that it can work for you. That you've incorporated all of that into who you are now. It's excellent. Thank you. Christy, I loved your presentation about your story uh, of your family life as a child. I think there's so much inside of you that you need to let go. Uh, to me, you look to say it, and I don't think you are. I think you've accomplished what you want to accomplish, and you need to let that go. I think you know exactly what you want to do in life. You are a beautiful lady, um, so I would say just figure out what it is that you love the most and then hone in on it. I think uh, you probably are a blessing to all of those people that, that you work with. It just seems so genuine and uh, they probably do tell you a lot of wonderful, uh, very intimate stories that I thought it was just terrific. Thank you. Lauren, when you walked out and you just let everything go and told your story, the self-confidence that you demonstrated was unbelievable and I think when you walked out we all had gooseys. I love your welfare to winner. Um, not everybody was born into a perfect family and not all of us have a perfect story. Don't be afraid to use that story in your everyday life because you are going to be a magnet to people who are going down the road just like you went through. And the transformation for these kids that you're in, the in their lives, wow. All I could think of was John Wayne. I mean, just get out of my way. I'm <laughs> going to take this show. But it's terrific. Thank you. Jennifer, I think you are the epitome of a lady. I loved your passion. You are every employer's dream. Man, that girl loves her job and it shows. I think that you should be able to pour that into someone else and grow whatever it is that you want to grow in your salon. Um, it's very infectious when you love what you do to give that gift to somebody else. So don't keep that for yourself. You really have found your place, and I think you've got a, a tremendous future, and it's going to expand in a lot of directions to take you to some great places. Board, based on the deliberation and the principles embodied in the book Zebras and Cheetahs, which person looks different and runs faster? Based on the presentation in the boardroom today, Kendra Cook, do we have a winner? Lauren Hudgens. Congratulations, we have some few people that want to give you a hug, right? <laughs> Group hug. <laughs> I just accomplished something um, that I said I wanted to do. It's really caused me to step outside my comfort zone and to grow as a person. There was a lot of things that I thought that I never could do that I was really pushed out of my box to do and I did them. I think the best thing from this experience has been to teach me that life is a journey and this is just another step in that journey. So it gave me a lot of confidence building and it's helped me create some better vision of what I want to go back and do um, when I get back to the salon and what I want to do in the future.